When's the last time that you heard a saxophone solo that took your breath away? You were just like, what the hell was that? Well, not too long ago, uh, I listened to this Earl Bostick track. Now, Earl Bostick was a really legendary sax player, but not one you might have heard of. And uh, it's called Up There in Orbit. And this track knocked my socks off and it's gonna knock yours off as well because this is one of the most virtuosic incredible sax solos you've probably never heard in your life and if you have heard it you know exactly what I'm talking about but Earl Bostick was one of the most renowned sax players especially amongst sax players but a lot of other musicians in general in fact he's one of the few people that the general consensus is that he could uh and did cut Charlie Parker in jam sessions and gave Charlie Parker, you know, basically a saxophone lesson on stage. And there's not many people that can say they're, they're uh, technically and musically, you know, up to take down the likes of Charlie Parker, but Earl Bostick was one of them. He was also a really important mentor for John Coltrane. So this guy, you know, was really important in, this hist in the um, history of saxophone. Now this track, <laughs> up there in orbit, you know where this is going already, but just before we delve into this, insane solo. Let me just mention that uh, I've got a free gift for you. It's my Saxophone Success Masterclass. You can use the link that you can see there. It's got a bunch of really cool stuff um, to instantly transform your practice, your playing, your improvising, and some tricks, <laughs> tips and tricks, which are really gonna make a big difference to you. So use the link there. And uh, the link is also in the description. -y. So check that out. Now let's uh, get back to Up There in Orbit. Let's start at the beginning and it starts nice and mellow. Not too hard to start with. It's like, you know, it's almost got that um, uh, sing, sing, sing type drum beat to it. So right out of the gate, let's talk about El Bostic's tone. Now, I read somewhere that he, uh, he was an alto player, but I read uh, somewhere that he uses a tenor reed. So guess what I've done? I've just got a tenor reed and put it on my alto to be like in that... Earl Bostic vibe. Now, so let's see if I can get my face out of the camera so you can see it. Right, there you go. That is a tenor reed, which is on my alto mouthpiece. So I'm uh, I'm totally in the spirit of Earl Bostic today. And he's got this growly, growly sound. That's his kind of trademark, um, trademark, his uh, trademark tone. You gotta love that growliness. So uh, let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now things start to get cooking. So quite a quite a mellow sort of opening with those um, little bluesy phrases he does. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something along those lines. Um, now it's in, the key is uh, concert E flat. So C for alto. So almost everything in this solo with a few little bluesy exceptions and chromatic things is on a C major scale, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's keep going and see what happens in the next chorus. Okay, so things are starting to get warmed up now. And he's doing, uh, he's doing this kind of figure. <laughs> Which sounds really great. And it's a C, C, A, C, and then a top note. And he keeps changing the top note. Ba boo and boo, ba boo and do, ba do and do, ba do and do, ba do and do, from like G's, F sharps, F E E flat, but then he picks it up to be even faster. Check out what happens next. And actually, it's not just the virtuosic stuff which he's doing; it's the groove, the feel. 
the amount he digs into that, you know, to the to the rhythm of the track, the growl, the false fingerings, the kind of just the grooviness is off the charts. But now he's t now he's taking it up a notch with that exact same pattern, but playing it faster. <laughs> Okay, check this out. <laughs> And now he's into this real groovy bit where he double fingers that C. But I should also say that one of the other absolutely incredible things about this performance is, is all the lines that he uses to link, you know, the uh, the showcase things that he's doing. And they're actually really cool. They're really in time. They're really strong. And it's sort of what you might call pre-bop. So they're not really bebop lines, um, but they're really effective. And he absolutely nails it right. So now he's into this insistent uh, repeated C thing talking in alto pitch. So, you know, you play a normal C and you play a low C fingering uh, with or without the octave key, probably without. Um, and it gives it that double, you know, that that double fingering sound. It gives the, the long fingering, gives a different timbre. So it sounds like this. Of course, the way he does it is much better than that. Nice to finish. Oh! <laughs> so, this bit, this bit really takes your breath away when it suddenly comes in. about that for technique. Now, I think what he does is G and then a low C fingering to get the G overtone, G harmonic. Uh, and then he, again, varies the top note. So it's this, it's this kind of vibe here. Can't do it anything like he can do it. Let's have it again. Hang on, just a minute. Let's have that again. <laughs> that is insane. I think it's this. So it's kind of like uh, an E minus, E minus seven arpeggio, E, G, B, D. And then you keep the G and the E at the bottom and you swap it out the top two notes for a C sharp and a B flat. And then again, you swap them out for a C and an A. So the top two notes change, the bottom two notes are the same. Check out how ridiculous this is, okay. Oh, that bluesy bit is absolutely awesome. Let's back that up here, that praise. Oh, 
so good. Now then, each chorus is like a whole new chapter. You just, it's like one of those presents. You keep on wrapping it and there's more and more good stuff. Like a sort of a, a Russian doll of goodies. You know, there's no end to what he pulls out the bag. Okay, we haven't even got started yet. Check this out. So um, that is uh, just octave C's. <laughs> Sorry, not octave C's, octave G's, my bad. And then I think up to a top C at the end. I think that's just an F. Isn't that just like an F arpeggio? It's just popped straight out with him though, doesn't it? The tone of those altissimo notes. What about the tone of those altissimo notes? Just screaming. It sounds so much higher than it actually is. Uh, to be fair, he doesn't really nail that one, so I'll, I'll give myself a little free pass on that. Up to top C there. He's such a winner. That's a top E. But you guess that uh, sort of lip, you know, trumpet players would call it a lip trill. I'm trying to find the harmonic there, badly. Do you know what? I'm going to blow my lip out before I've done this video. And there's still some good high stuff to come, so I better save myself. up to those those up to those hey, that was that top G I guess man the control on those on those top G's I don't know if I can play top G Is it a top G? Hang on. <laughs> oh, that hurts my lip. Sir Valor, what am I doing wrong? Come on, son! <laughs> top A! You know he's got to go top C! By the way, <laughs> just while we recover from that absolutely insane moment, we're now like three minutes into this of solid, solid blowing. 
So, you know, that needs stamina. He just hit the top C. I don't know if I I have to cheat if I want that top C. <laughs> but he controls it so beautifully. And then into more grooving stuff. It's not even over yet. That would be the climax. That's like, you know, close the curtains, game over for most people, but not Earl. He's still going. It's so good. <laughs> Insane. that anyway that was quite a good top e for me actually but so much facility right so fast up there this is what was it 58 but he was i think he was doing stuff like this in the 40s man like, most people never played above an F. Like, you're lucky you might have got a top G or a top A. Um, and even these days, you think, who are the kings of Altissimo? You've got Lenny Pickett, you know, um, Joe Lovano, you know, all the sort of modern players that are just insane in the Altissimo. But here he is in the 40s, crushing this in the Altissimo. Absolutely crushing it. <laughs> Shouldn't even be. I'm ashamed, ashamed to be playing Altissimo after Bostic. <laughs> Brilliant. Something like that. Anyway, again, I mean, I've never actually played this before, so, but nevertheless, even if I practice for a year, I can do that. Such great lines, and they're not bluesy or bebop, they're just kind of major scales in a way. What a time! Oh, yeah, I know that one. That's uh, E flat E G, really quick. I can actually. I can actually do that one. It's probably the only thing I can do. <laughs> oh, it's so cooking, isn't it? It's just absolutely cooking. Oh, 
Oh man, I've got to transcribe this whole thing. This is where it kind of fades out towards the end. that thing again from the start where he goes uh, C to A and then ch changes the top note. But nice like groovy kind of fade out. <laughs> Love that last chord. things like a 13 sharp 11 to finish love it a little bit of organ a tiny bit of guitar just reminds you that there were actually other people playing in that entire track so wowie how about that how about that up there in orbit by earl bostic absolutely jaw dropping saxophone stuff <laughs> So that's all I've got for you this week. That was insane though, right? Oh my word. El Bostic up there in orbit. The most jaw-dropping solo you've possibly never heard from one of the most underrated sax players of all time. Absolutely insane. As I mentioned earlier, you can get my free saxophone success masterclass using the link that you can see there. That's a whole bunch of teaching. I'm not going to guarantee you'll get any, anywhere near Earl standard, but <laughs> it'll give you something. If you bought me a coffee, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the coffee buyers. And if you think it's worth it and you enjoy the uh, content in the channel, you can use the link there to buy me a coffee. So, there's a bunch of really cool stuff happening in the Inner Circle membership, including a replay of a cool session we had with the one and only legend of saxophone, Ernie Watts. And there'll be many other guests coming up, and there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff in the Inner Circle. Go and check that out. That's all the parish <laughs> notices. And uh, in the meantime, practice hard, practice smart. And just like I've been doing today, enjoy your music. Take it easy. <laughs> so rubbish.